Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Devotees of Jesus. This is your host Julian Phillips and let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary, invite your son Jesus, your husband Saint Joseph, all angels and saints to this reading of scripture with us. And let very lovely fruit come from it. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 6 to 14. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you know me, you will know the Father also. Indeed, you know him, and you have seen him. Philip asked him, Lord, show us the Father, and that is enough. Jesus said to him, What? I have been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever sees me sees the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? All that I say to you, I do not say of myself. The Father who dwells in me is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. At least believe it on the evidence of these works that I do. Truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will do the same works that I do. He will do even greater works than these, for I am going where the Father is. And everything you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And everything you ask in calling upon my name, I will do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The human race has been on the planet for some time now, and we've gone through various stages. One of the things that is noteworthy within the last 500 years is the massive technological improvements that we have witnessed. It has been said, for example, let's say from the year 1000 to the year 1200, in a place like Europe, life for the average person would have been the same through those hundred years, meaning there would have been no massive technical developments, technological developments. By contrast, just look at the last 50 years, 1970 to 2020. Look at how much technology has changed and transformed how we do what we do. So what we are looking at here is that devices can impact on how we live. And it seems as if there is um, what you might call a flow, a rhythm that has been established in the last 50 years. Meaning technology breeds new technology, which breeds new technology. It's, It's like a snowball effect. It's just getting bigger and bigger and developing more and more and more speed. So here, Jesus has developed a certain rhythm. He has developed a certain speed. So for the followers of Jesus, he has progressed from simply a man who did a miracle with Peter at uh, uh, um, in the lake, to, to pull up a large number of fish. And he's already healed people. He's already multiplied bread and fish. And he's developing it, developing it further and further. And I imagine Jesus is saying things that he feels people are ready to hear. So he says, so if I could just come back here, God in his wisdom has allowed Notice I said allowed, and I didn't say approved of. He has allowed the coronavirus because he knows with the technology we have, we were ready for it. What do I mean ready for it? Well, we were ready to conduct, for ex- I told you all before I'm a teacher, we were ready to do school and do education from home remotely. Why? Well, why we, what made us ready? We had the technology to do it. So Jesus now, has done a number of miracles, and he feels people are ready to hear what he just said. When you see me, you will know the Father. And indeed, you know him, and you have seen him. 
Now, when we just read this, Philip, it doesn't seem, was ready to hear that. Because Philip then asks, well, just show us the Father and that is enough. But Jesus feels it is the right time to tell Philip, look, you should know by now that when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. The Father is in me. So there's a saying that people only receive what they are ready to receive. And it may not look like it, but Philip was ready to hear that statement. Philip was ready to hear Jesus say that when you see him, you see the Father. And what does that mean now? That meant that Philip was ready to digest that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Now, Jesus being God is a massive point for some people, and to others it's a total non-point. So what are we to make of that? If Jesus is God for you, I would say you should be happy because you should know that God became man. He walked the earth. He knows the human condition, not only from the perspective of God knowing everything, but having lived it. And therefore, he knows what it is to be one of you. He knows what it is to be human inside out and what um, what I would call a sense of confidence this should give you, that wherever you are, wherever you are, Jesus is right there. He is God, he's right there, and he loves you with all his being. If Jesus being God is of no importance to you, I will say God loves you still, Jesus loves you still, but what will happen in time is that you will, be, you will find yourself in a situation where you want more certainty, because there are many who are content with a vague, generalized, unknowable, unseeable God. And in a sense, that does fit the definition of God, but God did not want himself to be so unascertainable. Now, let me be clear. If I explain Jesus up, down, left, right, back, front, as if he was some pencil, then he's not God. There are aspects of Jesus I can't explain. How did he walk on water? I can't explain that. How did he raise Lazarus from the dead? I can't explain that. How did he tell the weather to calm down on the lake of Galilee? I can't explain that. But the one thing I I can say is that we are not being asked to explain it. We are being asked to accept it. And listen to what Jesus says. I said this before and it, uh, it will... It bears repeating. Truly I say to you, he who believes in me will do the same works that I do. He will do even greater than these, for I am going where the Father is. One of the things that I've been doing of late is reading up on the lives of the saints. That's an age-old tradition in the church. And one saint that comes from the Greek Orthodox Church, St. Porphyrios, my, he worked miracles that were so amazing. So there's an account of a young lady who was in a state where she wanted to end her life. And she made up her mind that she was going to eat some weed killer in her garden. And she heard some footsteps behind her. And then there was this priest. And he he explained to her, you know, paradise is all joy and light. Christ is all light and he scatters joy and delight on everyone. And he made it clear to her that if he if she ate that weed killer, she would not experience this paradise. So she resolved not to do it, and bef- before you know it, she looked and the man was gone. He seemingly appeared out of nowhere, and he disappeared with, the, with this life-saving message. Now, how did he do that? Well, in a sense, I have an answer. Truly, I say to you, he who believes in me will do the same works that I do. He will do even greater than these, for I am going where the Father is. St. Porphyrios, and there are many alive who still who knew him. People say of him one thing for sure, for sure. He loved Christ. He loved Jesus tremendously. So what a promise we have before us. Believing that Jesus is God, that he is with us, that he loves us with all our being, that in itself empowers. And we will do greater things than he. Amen.
Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us.